what's up everybody for those of you that are new to the channel my name is aaron and i've been a lineman on the east coast of canada for 19 going on 20 years now in today's video i wanted to share a story with you guys i've seen in the comments a few times now guys asking what's the craziest story or the craziest trouble call that you've responded to it's pretty hard to respond to that in the comments so i figured i'd share it in a video before we get started, I did want to mention I've got a few things coming up. We've got a brand new Milwaukee LED wireless spotlight. It goes on the hood of your truck, and that thing is absolutely amazing. So we're going to be doing a video review of that product coming up soon, as well as an episode that shows behind the scenes how I make these videos, the equipment I use, along with a quick demonstration of a really cool app that is designed to help fellow lineman out with transformer banking. You download it right onto your phone from the Play Store. It was completely manufactured, designed, coded, distributed, everything by a fellow lineman down in the States. So we're gonna be taking a look at that stuff in the coming weeks. The weekends here have been crazy busy. We've had a winter storm every weekend, so I haven't had a whole lot of time for editing, but I'm hoping to get that stuff out to you guys soon. Actually, today is January 26th, Wednesday, and we've got another big storm coming this weekend. So I'm not sure if I'll have a whole lot of time for this stuff, but uh, let's get into it. All right, so first thing I wanna share with you guys, and some of you who've been following my channel and my Instagram for a long time now, may have seen this quick story. I did wanna share it again. It wasn't real crazy, but it was, it was pretty funny. So as a customer, when you call in a trouble call, the more information that we can get, the better. If the information is exaggerated, let's say, for example, a flickering lights call. If you say your lights are flickering all day, every day, when in reality it happened twice in the morning, it makes our troubleshooting very difficult. In that case, for example, it could be an all closure related to an incident that I responded to earlier that day. If you've got, let's say, a broken neutral going into your house and your lights going all wonky, real bright, real dim, our troubleshooting process will be completely different. So when you call in, the more accurate the information, the better. Which brings me to this quick story. I jumped in my truck one day and I had no power call. And the dispatcher was kind of laughing. He said, uh, take, take a look at the comments on this one. And uh, it said, power went out, watched a squirrel running across the lines, get into the high voltage wires, causing a small explosion. The squirrel then fell to the ground, landing in the snow, at which point a crow, or some type of bird, landed in the snow immediately after and picked up the squirrel and took off. It noted that the customer wanted to advise of this in case the lineman that was responding and investigating couldn't find the problem. So when I showed up to this particular call, I gotta say, I was laughing. What I seen was exactly that. There was an imprint of a squirrel or a chipmunk or something in the snow, along with the tracks where the bird landed and the evidence was gone. So pretty sure I still got the picture of that somewhere. I'll track that down and attach it to this video. The main story that I wanted to share with you guys, one of the craziest trouble calls I'd ever been to. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the trouble calls I respond to is stuff that I can't share with you guys. Any incidents where there was uh, people injured, loss of property, um, sometimes there's ongoing investigations and liability issues. A lot of that stuff it's, it's not something that I can or want to share in this video. This particular story, however, did involve an incident with the police. Enough time has passed by now that the incident has been resolved and I can share with you the story. So as some of you may know, every summer I go into the office to help out with the, the supervisor and the foreman and stuff when they go on their vacations, maybe between three and five weeks a year, usually in July, I head into the office, uh, grab a pickup truck and help out with the planning and uh, checking out jobs, helping out organize the crews and stuff like that. So normally what I do where I do keep the vehicle, where I keep this truck at my house is the guy who's relieving me during that time, grabs a pickup truck. We meet somewhere in the middle, swap trucks. I carry on with the, the foreman duties. He carries on and covers my work for the day. So this one particular day, at the end of the day, we met up. And uh, he had, he was changing some lights, some LED lights that had burned out. And he grabbed one and threw it in the back of the pickup truck. And we were just having some small talk. And he mentioned he didn't feel overly well. 
And he kind of laughed and said that when he was changing that particular street light, that's when it happened. He said his face started burning, his forehead, his eyes, his nose was running. Um, it started burning his throat. And he said it came on fast to the point where he said, every time I touch this light, it's making my face burn, which he also thought was kind of ridiculous. So he carried on with the task, changed the light, threw it at the back of the truck and carried on with his day. So he did notice uh, the reason the light was out was the protective glass along with the LEDs was completely shattered. And there was a pink powdered residue all over the light. So again, he took note of that, didn't think a whole lot of it, but did mention it to me when we swapped trucks at the end of the day. So that stayed in the back of the pickup truck and he went back to the office. The next, fast forward the next morning when we swapped trucks, uh, the light was still in the back of the pickup. He mentioned, you know, shoot, I forgot to throw that in the dumpster. I said, no worries. So later on in that day, when I headed to the office, I jumped up in the back of the truck, grabbed a hold of that light, and instantly my face, hands, everything just started burning. So I let it go. I left it in the back of the truck. I jumped in the cab and uh, was just kind of sitting there as the burning got more and more intense. My, my forehead, especially right on the line where I wear my ball cap, was burning and it got worse. And I started getting a little worried. I was wondering if it was psychological, um, but th there's no way. It was, it was a pretty intense burning. So by coincidence, our safety officer, the whole province had called me for an unrelated incident. And he kind of asked what I was up to. And I casually mentioned that I grabbed this light, my face started burning, and there was this unknown powdered subst substance on the light. To which he kind of said, are, are you serious? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, well, don't touch the light again. And I said, no, I don't intend to. It's, it, it's kind of messed up. And things escalated extremely quickly from there. He, he drove into the city. I sat and waited. And uh, we observed the light in the back of the truck, to which there was this unknown substance on the light, which was causing our faces to burn. So what do you do at that point is, I mean, it seems kind of far fetched, but is the powder some sort of a chemical weapons attack, a terrorist attack? I don't know. I can't see somebody trying to cause a situation unsafe intentionally for a lineman, but it's, there still remains the fact that my face was burning. The guy who changed its face was burning and there was a powdered substance on the light. So we made a few phone calls. We called our, our work safe program for the province, kind of saying, hey, what, what do we do about this? I mean, I didn't want to grab the light again. It was sitting in the back of the truck. And uh, we actually phoned the fire chief. Do you, do you guys have any form of uh, a protocol for an unknown chemical substance? So the fire chief came by, our work safe came by, our supervisor came by pretty much had a whole bunch of people standing around this truck looking at the light. Where do we go from here? So fast forward, it must have been a couple hours that went by. We basically grounded the truck. The truck was not to move. Nobody was to touch the light. It was a situation that we basically didn't have any training for work methods. It, it was an odd one. So we got a hold of a local company, a private company that specializes in dangerous chemicals. And while the substance in the light was still unidentified, the company sent a representative that was in a full hazmat suit, gloves, face mask, looked like an astronaut basically. And they brought a special barrel that contains hazardous substances. They took the light put it in the barrel along with all the, the clothes that the individual was wearing. It was brought to a location where it was incinerated. So we pretty much chalked up the incident as an unknown. It was, it was really very strange. So the incident was shared with Lyman around the province. We assumed it was an isolated incident, but we wanted to share, we put out a bulletin for all Lyman to see if they're working on the light, they see this powdered substance, not to touch it and to report it immediately. 
we contacted the manufacturer of the light to see if perhaps there was a chemical of some sort used in the light that would be toxic or an irritant to, to skin. The manufacturer um, took a look at the pictures. They assured us it was, it was a foreign substance to the light. So we we're pretty much at a standstill until about a week later. Now, I can't say exactly how this information initially came to be. However, we found out there was an incident where the light was hung. I actually, I found it on, on Facebook. Um, I use, there's a website I use on Facebook quite often when I get emergency trouble calls as there's usually pictures up within seconds. If there's a bad car accident, lines down across the road, anything of that sort, before I even leave home, I usually have a pretty good idea of what I'm walking into. So that's one real good function of social media for responding to these emergency calls. So I found a post on social media where there was an incident involving the police and there was an active shooter. So the police had the shooter cornered at a location, rural location, and there was one street light in the, in the area on a pole. There was a driveway nearby and the suspect fled into the woods. So our police brought in their, their special forces, their tactical guys or whatever you want to call them with, uh, you know, when they were all black with their faces covered and had assault rifles and whatever. So the police called in their tactical response team and they showed up with their real fancy police vehicles. And one of the officers, if you call them that said, guys, we're, we're sitting under this street light. We're, we're, we're sitting ducks here and the guys in the woods. So they shot out the light. Now they didn't just shoot out the light. They fired off what is called a ferret. And I found this on Google. I think I can get some pictures, but a ferret, it's basically a riot bullet. This thing is huge. We found the casing when we went back and it's like that big around and it basically has a rubbered tip on it. It's like a rubber bullet, but it's filled with a powdered CS gas. CS gas is a form or maybe the same thing as tear gas. So once the story started coming together as what this could possibly be, I remembered, for those of you that don't know, I was in the military um, many years ago. I did three years as a reservist doing full-time contracts and I did have CS gas training. You run into a building and they had actual CS gas um, in the building and it was horrible. Your, your face starts burning. Anywhere is that there's any sweat or mucus, your nose, your eyes, the brim of your hat started burning really bad. You couldn't breathe. You could hardly keep your eyes open. It was not a good feeling. So during our training, we had to neutralize the chemical with a special, we called it a cloth with butter on it. It was basically the slime that neutralized the gases that was on your skin to stop the burning. You put your face mask on and continued on with, with your mission. So as I remembered the symptoms of that gas, it all started to make sense. Now I wasn't completely engulfed in it with the street light, but we certainly did have the substance make contact with our skin hands, especially, I can't remember if I touched my face, but I must've. So I contacted one of the members of the police that I've been working with quite closely on some copper theft situations. And he confirmed that, oh yeah, during an incident a couple weeks ago, our special response, emergency response team, tactical, whatever you call them, they shot out the light with a ferret. And when it made contact with the light and the bolt exploded, it released this CS powder all over the light, all around the area. And yeah, so mystery solved. The, the, the light was completely coated in this powder form of this CS gas. So I called my supervisor, let him know, look, I think we found the solution. And we actually had a meeting, the, I wasn't there, but the supervisors had a meeting with the police and kind of said like, look, this is, it, it's a situation that's, that's unheard of. It's, it's never happened to any of our guys before. Um, even in, in the province, I don't think it's common for them to sh shoot out lights with a ferret bullet. However, basically in the meeting, they said, look, 
if something like this ever happens again, please call us to let us know. Hey guys, there was an active incident last night and we shot out your lights. At least that way we, we know what we're getting into. So anyways, that was a pretty, pretty wild story. It was one of those situations that when you do your training to become a lineman, it's not like, oh, and if you ever respond to a call where a light was shot out with tear gas, here's what you do. So you never really know what you're going to get into with this trade. You take the training that you get and uh, do the best you can to, to work safe and never stop learning. So I'll see what I can find for pictures on my computer. I know I, I did have quite a few. Um, there's a few, again, that I, I can't share because of liability. I obviously can't show the house or the location where this happened, but I can show you a few pictures of the light. You'll see the pink powder all over the light. It was, it was quite an interesting call. One to go in the, in the books for sure. So other than that, guys, I'll try to get this up soon. Um, I might be able to get that Milwaukee video ready for you all this weekend, but if that storm hits, not a chance. So that's pretty well all I got for you guys here today. If, if you have any stories you want to share, put them down in the comments, or even if you have any pictures, you can shoot me a uh, instant message on Instagram or Facebook as always. Um, I get quite a few messages on there. So every once in a while in the evening, I'll try to catch up on a dozen messages or so. So if I haven't answered you yet, hang tight. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, I appreciate everyone's interaction with this channel, your comments and, and positive feedback, it, even the negative feedback. It helps out a lot with this channel. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.